I'll be quick. Um, again, we've had a good week of practice. Uh, you know, just looking forward to see how our guys respond going on the road, um, how they play uh, in a different atmosphere. Um, I've educated them on where Kalamazoo is, where we're staying. Um, I think it's really good to get a road trip in before you get into the ACC play. Um, so what better place than up at Kalamazoo? And it uh, should be a great opportunity to uh, see what we have again um, after two, you know, two tough games as far as just playing 60 minutes and being in a battle every weekend. We'll find out how our guys respond. Question? Coach, uh, what does Sean Taylor and Ladarius Jefferson bring as a, as a running back do that you guys have to stop? Um, again, really fast guy and a bigger 238, 240 pound back. Kind of like, uh, you know, I guess a Vince Davis and a Daniel Carter combination, which we see in practice quite a bit through fall camp. So, um, you know, just two different guys that may, you know, one you probably take maybe a little bit lower and flip him upside down, make sure he doesn't jump over you like Gavin would, um, but usually in the box. Um, one guy we call sweep tackle um, and uh, take his pins out. And, and uh, another back, you know, just a regular back that's got good speed that they can do a lot of different things with. Guys, a couple of your players talked about this week on how last year you guys were a little, a little bit caught off guard with what they were doing. What goes into making sure that doesn't happen again this year? Um, they're always every, every week they're going to catch you off guard with what they do. Um, we didn't, you know, we worked on RPOs, but uh, just the way they executed it um, was better than what we've seen out of most people. Um, like I said, Eric Count was there, but if the quarterback puts the ball in the money, which he did a year ago, um, I mean, he was perfect. And uh, like I said, I don't know if it came down to, you know. You know how how we played some of the RPOs it didn't catch us by surprise because we practiced it. I think they'd be surprised how good they were at executing them. And um, so, I mean, you're always going to get caught up. There's going to be stuff that we did not practice. I mean, they'd be fools, we'd be fools, go in there and just do things that we practiced all week that they practiced all week and see see who's better. We know they're a talented football team, and and you expect the unexpected. Okay, uh, uh, pretend you're Tim Lester and you don't know what's going through Pat Narduzzi's mind as far as quarterbacks go. How does that change your week? We could probably. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, we're, we're not playing game. Give me a good question, Jerry. Come on. Yeah, well, your injury questions are better than that. Give you a bad question. Uh, do you have any clarity on your quarterback situation? Not yet. No. That was my question. Big game time decision. Is Keaton part of that decision? Yes. They've got. Sorry, go ahead, Steve. Uh, you talked a little bit about how they bring pressure a lot. Does it feel like you're looking in a mirror a bit when you prepare for them? Given that. Um, you know, they, they brought 60% pressure against Michigan State and about 35% pressure against Ball State. I expect more in the 60s, okay? Uh, if you looked at Pitt in a year, we're probably around 66, you know, 67%, 33%. I mean, we're somewhere between 30 and 33 every week. Um, but they're, 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 they'll bring pressure, you know, Saturday for sure. We expect it. We prepared for it. Um, that's just what we'll, we'll think they think they can get home, and uh, we, we expect a lot of pressure. It seemed like when you watched them on tape, they would find creative ways to like show it one way and blitz from another, and that was something that Tennessee did, guys, last week. How do you have you guys prepared for that this week to make same it thing? I mean, you know, that's what everybody does. You're showing it from one side, trying to bring it to the other side, um, and that's kind of what you do. So it's you know we practice it all week, what they do, how they do it, and what they could do. So it's what you you know you prepare for the unexpected. What did you like from Kyler and Yarnell this week? Um, you know, they're both mature, you know, and again, you know, I think both of them got better you know, the more reps they got this week because uh, obviously they got more reps. Um, so um, just the maturity, and uh, I think they got better uh, with a couple more reps. How about your kickers? How did they do this week? How did Ben respond to his game on Saturday, and what did you see out of both of those guys this week? You know, they've been both, you know, really solid in practice. I mean, it comes down to the game, and, you know, we know we're not going to make every one of them, but Ben had a good week, and, and Sam had a good week. So expect a good Saturday. You guys went from allowing 5.8 yards per carry to 2.6 last week in the run defense. Even though you didn't come out with a little win, that seemed like a, more of like the tone that you guys normally set. How do you guys keep carrying that forward this week against this opponent? Okay, we have to, you know, we have to stop the run. That's a, that'll be the number one key. And you know, the RPOs, you know, they can't run the ball and you know, and uh, and then also throw RPOs. Last year, you know, what caught us off guard is they were running the ball and then we tried to stop the RPOs. And then they ran the, you know, they weren't really running the ball early. They were just throwing it. And, you know, I think it frustrated our kids to the point where then we didn't start to stop the run. So we're going to be sold out on selling the run. That's got to be the number one thing. And then uh, hopefully our guys do their jobs and we, we have answers. We have more answers right now than we've, we've ever had. I understand they're not doing RPOs as much 
this year? Does that make it more difficult in your preparation? Um, not really. Um, you know, you got good scoop there, Jerry. That's a good question. Now. You understand. Finally, got you. Um, <laughs> you're about finally. Um, you know, a year ago, I think it was seventy percent RPOs going into our game. They're forty percent, so they're still doing plenty. And you know, if you don't stop, and forty turns into fifty or sixty. If they're doing well, they're just going to you know uh, do what you know do what is, is gaining yards and getting the first down. So um, they're not doing as, as much with the coordinator, but you know T Tim Lester will have some stuff in and. Um, you know, they've learned some stuff from Harbaugh, who's their offense coordinator, who's off to Minnesota running RPOs there. Western's had a really solid track record with wide receivers, and Corey Crews had a really big game against you guys last year. What makes him so effective at what he does? You know, I mean, he's their go-to guy um, you know, almost every down. I mean, he's the guy, and, and they got other playmakers as well. But, uh, you know, he's tall, he's rangy, uh, and, he, and he catches the football. I mean, he's a playmaker. He's kind of like a Jared Wayne type guy that they can count on. They're going to give him the ball as much as they can. we got to know where number four is. Waldo. That's your stadium. <laughs> That's right, Waldo Stadium, Waldo. Had a couple of players said that <clears throat> they remembered last year's game. That was a motivator for them this week. How much do you discuss last week or last year's game with Western, and or do you just try to move on? You know, it's like I've said earlier in the week. Do I have to say anything? I mean, I think the game speaks for itself. Um, you know, so I really don't don't need to say much. I think the game speaks for itself. Uh, ben Golly, I noticed, has had a really effective couple of games in pass coverage. What has he done to improve in that way and to, you know, make him at that effective? You know, Ben Golly's been good. I mean, you know, I think getting that first game under his belt was huge for him just to, you know, it's like I said, I think I told you last week, he was like, coach, is a lot different in practice. It's like, yeah, it is. I mean, you can't, practice is not going to be just like the game. And so he's growing up in, in seven days. That's That's a great thing. Um, so I think he'll keep getting better. He's got he's got great ability, and and I tell you, you know, Tyler Wilts did a nice job. You know, Shane Solomon did a nice job. You know, having Brandon George back last week was a big boost because uh, we had uh, Nick Lappy in there. So that was a, um, you know, we've got six linebackers at this point right now that we can rotate, keep fresh, keep them fast, and um, and that's important going into this game as well. Is there an extra charge to your offensive line this week to, to take, take a step forward? Because you got they've given up some pressure and they haven't exactly been the most dominant r rushing offense so far. No question about it. I mean, I, you know, I'm charged up. So if they are charged, I'm charged. Um, so they better be charged. Along that I'm line, charged. does that apply to the receivers as well? You know, yeah. knowing everybody's got to be charged. Okay, okay? Um, you know, everybody's got to be charged. I mean, you, you come off a loss, a tough loss, whatever. Played good, but didn't play good enough to win. You know, I'm charged. How do, you, how do you feel about rotating offensive linemen, though? Are you kind of opposed to that? I mean, you want five guys to sort of stick it out? or No, I mean, putting a, you know, swinging a guy in there and getting, you know, Branson Taylor in there for Carter Warren for a series is good. I think it's good to, to watch, see. And it's like, you know, after the first game, just, you know, I don't care offensive linemen or linebackers. I mean, you want to get guys involved, and you don't want to get them involved when you have to. You know, when you have to, that's when you go, you know, if we don't get them involved ever, then you got a problem. Uh, so just getting them involved in the game early helps them because eventually, you know, um, you know those, those guys are going to be thrown in there, and, and you'd rather be more prepared. Just have three plays instead of 37 in the second half. So Rossi had talked about how after the first game, even though you guys won, he was talking about like, hey, we do have to get our linebackers up to speed to be faster. How have you seen help help help? Uh, excuse me. How have you seen him help Tyler, uh, Shane, and the other guys kind of get up to that to that speed you expect? You know, I think you know. Again, I haven't seen him do anything. I just know Coach Matlack does a great job coaching. He's got them all on the same page. And you know, I'm sure Voss has his leadership things that he's doing and just getting, you know, the motivation part of it um, and making sure they know what to do. But, you know, Coach Matlack's going to be in charge of, you know, how do they get it done effectively and efficiently. Yeah, there may be other guys on the D-line that get more attention or name, more name recognition. But what does David Green mean to that group? Yeah, I mean, David's done a nice job. He's, you know, he started last week and he had a great week of practice. and. Um, you know, we need another really good week out of him as well. How about one more? That your receiver or your DBs got challenged by some really talented receivers through these first two weeks. Does that, and you said they played pretty well, does that make you any more confident or comfortable with selling out against the run? You know, confidence, we're, you know, we're going to play what we normally do. So we're not selling out against the run. We're going to play our defense. So our, we're, we're confident with what our corners and our safeties do. Um, and uh, it doesn't make you any more confident because you know, as soon as you let your guard down, you know, Western Michigan's got tools out there. They got players. Uh, they got NFL wideouts. I mean, the one NFL guy here from Shady Side is, you know, second round pick and starting for the Chiefs. So they've got players there. We know that, and uh, they've done a good job recruiting too. Coach, thank you. Hi right, guys. Thanks.